we have a metal ball here that weighs 638 newtons is, and is 1.8 meters long. And it's suspended by two wires. Uh, one is aluminum and one is copper. They both have a length of 0.6 meters and a cross-section of 0.28 millimeters, circular cross-section. Um, and so the aluminum wire is affixed to the left end of the bar and the copper wire has uh, a little bit of space from the right end. So it's 0.4 meters from the right end of the bar. If I am reading this right, yep, that is right. So we wanna find the fundamental frequency uh, of standing waves for each of these two wires. We wanna find the fundamental frequency. Uh, so the way we're gonna do that is uh, by the relationship uh, that V, which is, let me write this in red, V, is lambda f, which is square root of the tension over the mass per unit length. So we can calculate lambda because lambda n is nl over two. Here n is one, by the way, because we're the fundamental frequency. Uh, we can calculate the, uh, the tension in each wire by doing some classical mechanics. Uh, we can calculate the mass per unit length by uh, calculating M and then plugging in a value for L. So let's break this up bit by bit. So first let's calculate the wavelength. So the wavelength is gonna be the fundamental frequency. So N is equal to one and that's just gonna be L over two, which is 0 0.3 meters here. Great, so now we can write F is one over lambda, simplify it a little bit times f over mu. But still, we need to find f. So f is not as simple as just 638 divided by two for each of these because they're not evenly distributed. This is the left end, but this is a little bit over to the right end. So what we're gonna need, is, need to do is do a torque balancing equation. So if we draw a free body diagram for, uh, I've used blue, let's use green this time. For the bar, it's going to look something like this. So in the middle, we're going to have a force going down of 638 newtons at this point here, which is 0 0.9 meters, because it's in the middle. And then we're going to have the force from the copper, we'll call that FC, coming up here at 1.8 minus 1.4 meters. I'm sorry, 1.8 minus 0.4 meters. And we're going to have the force of aluminum going from the aluminum wire going up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sum of torques about this point here. So we can say that the sum of torques about this point is equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. And that's going to be minus 638 newtons. Oops. Times 0 0.9 meters plus FC times 1.4 meters. And now if you plug this in and solve for FC, you get that FC, the force of the copper wire, is 410.143 newtons. Keep a lot of sig figs here. And then finally, uh, we can solve for FA by doing a sum of forces. We know that the sum of forces is going to be equal to zero, which is FA plus FC minus 638 newtons. And then if you plug in uh, what we got for FC and do the math, what you get is FA is 227.857 newtons.
great. So we have the forces. So the only thing left, let's see, we know in this equation, we know lambda. Uh, now we know the forces, but we still don't know the mass. So we're going to have to use our equation that says uh, that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, because we know the volume, because we know the cross-sectional area, and we know the length. So this is going to be rho times pi r squared. Uh, pi r squared L, because they're cylinders, times pi um, 0 0.28 millimeters squared times 0 0.6 meters. But we're going to have to consult some resources to get what rho, what rho is, because the density of aluminum is not going to be the same as the density of copper. And I'm going to give you these values right here real quick. So the density of copper is equal to 8,960 kilograms. Kilograms per meter cubed. And then, oops. The density of aluminum is equal to 2,700 kilograms per meter cubed. And so uh, we can plug these values in and get as follows. So we can say that the fundamental frequency for copper here is going to be 1 over 0 0.3 meters times the square root of, so this is going to be 1 over lambda times LF over M, if we bring the ML, ML over top, which is going to be equal to 1 over lambda times LF rho pi r squared L, and we're going to end up canceling an L here, so we're going to simplify it. So it's just going to be 1 over lambda times the square root of F over rho pi r squared. So that's going to be, uh, for copper, we use the force of the copper, 410.143 newtons, divided by rho, which is 8,960 kilograms per meter cubed, times pi, times 0 0.28, times 10 to the minus 3, meters squared, take the square root of all that, and what you get is 1437.9 hertz. And now let's do the aluminum frequency. So that's going to be 1 over 0 0.3 meters times the square root of the aluminum force, 227.857 newtons, divided by rho for aluminum, which is 2,700 kilograms per meter cubed, times pi times 0 0.28 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Oops, there should be a meter here. Don't forget our units. Cubed. Which is 1,951.17 hertz. Fantastic. So I know that was involved. It's uh, one of those problems that really makes you think of physics from several different angles. But I think that's kind of where the fun is in it, to be honest.